This is the most difficult of the three videos concerned with finding the volumes of prisms. And in this case, we're going to find the volume of a pentagonal prism similar to this one. And we're going to assume that the pentagon is a regular pentagon. Now we know that to find the volume, we need to multiply the area of the end by the length. So the first thing we have to do is to find the area of this regular pentagon. Now, if we look at it analytically, we'll see that it's actually made up of five isosceles triangles radiating out from the center. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the area of one of those triangles. Then we multiply by five to get the area of the face, multiply by the length, and that will give us the volume. So the first thing we do then is to focus on one of these triangles. So what do we need to know to be able to find the area of one of those triangles? Well, the area of a triangle is half the base times the height, of course, so we need to know the base length and we need to know the height. Now, in a real practical situation, I could simply get a ruler and measure those, and life would be very simple. But in a GCSE examination, that's just not going to happen. The examiners are going to force you into using some mathematics, in this case, trigonometry. And the way they do that is to let you calculate some of these measurements for yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the length of the sides is 7 centimetres and the length of the prism is 34 centimetres. And that's all you're going to be given. So let's focus on one of the isosceles triangles. We see its base is 7 centimetres. We already know that. The angle at the apex, the top, must be one-fifth of 360 degrees, which is 72 degrees. And we can soon work out that the base angles must be 54 degrees each, as the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, of course. Next, we drop a perpendicular from the apex of the triangle to meet the base at right angles, and that gives us two right-angled triangles. Now we're getting somewhere, because we can use a little trigonometry to find the height of the triangle. Let's call the height of this triangle h. Then we can write h over 3.5 is equal to the tangent of 54 degrees. h is therefore 3.5 tan 54 degrees. The area of the whole triangle is given by half the base multiplied by the height, which is half of 7 multiplied by 3.5 10, 54 degrees. Now that's the hard part done already. We now multiply by 5 to get the area of the end, the cross section. Area of end equals 5 times a half times 7 times 3.5 10, 54 degrees. And then the volume is the length of the prism multiplied by the area of the end. Now that's equal to 34 times 5 times a half times 7 times 3.5 tan 54 degrees. And multiplying all that out of our calculators gives 2,866.31 cubic centimetres. All we need to do now is correct that to say three significant figures and that's our answer. So that is 2,870 cubic centimetres, correct to three significant figures. Just for practice, it's a good idea to see what that is in different units. And the obvious one here is litres, as 1,000 cubic centimetres make a litre. So this volume could also be written as 2.87 litres. In other words, it has the same volume as two whole one litre orange juice cartons and a bit more than three quarters of another. And that's easier for us to imagine than 2,870 cubic centimetres. Just one small point here, we could have worked out some of these calculations as we went along, as we did indeed with the first two prism volume calculation movies. But I've left it all till the end this time, some people prefer to do that and just work it all out in one go on their calculator. 